Hi, I'm Ed Parco, the host of Helping the Brave, and let's bring in our guest today. Johnny is Bartels, right? Yes, Bartels is. All right, just I thought so from our other. I was on your podcast, and you know that's why I'm like, hey, we need to get you on this podcast. Yes, thank All you right. for having me, Ed. Oh, my pleasure. All right, we'll get right into it. Uh, what service did you join, and why? Well, I was in the army, um, and the reason why when I was growing up. And I had a couple of brothers that was also in the military. Um, one was in the Marine Corps and one was in the Army. And so, you know, I kind of seen them serve. And so I said, you know, I think I want to do kind of follow their footsteps. And uh, and I did. And, yeah, I'm glad I did. It was really a really great experience. That's good. Uh, what did you do in the Army? So I started out as a, believe it or not, as a light wheel vehicle mechanic when I first started out. You know, I did that for probably less than a year, and then I switched over to uh, to supply um, in the military. And from there, I kind of branched off in, in the supply arena. I stayed in that for pretty much the rest of my career um, in the military. How long were you in? Uh, a little over, almost 27 years. Wow. Then. Yeah, almost 27 years. Well, they, we usually call that a lifer, but you know, <laughs> you didn't make thirty. So I didn't make thirty. I, I decided to get out before I hit the thirty-year mark. Um, but I'm glad. I, I mean, the experience I had was great, and I'm glad I did get out when I when I did because it, it worked out well for me. Okay. So, how long have you been retired? <sighs> Since 2015, actually. Wow. So what is that? What about? That's almost nine years. Nine years. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, how time flies. Well, we're in 24, right? And 25 yeah. is next year. You'll be 10 years. 10 years in. Yeah, who, who would have figured that one? But, yeah, uh, nine years out. Can't believe it. It went by pretty quick, too. So It, it always does. Everything goes by fast. Yeah. Um, I'm the president of my rotary this year. I have uh, eight, seven more meetings. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I left. <laughs> I was like, holy cow, that's gone by fast. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I finished June 30th. Yep. June 30th. Yeah. So I have May and June left. So. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty. That's it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I don't know if you've been in Rotary uh, or what Rotary is. Do you know that? No, I, I, but can you explain that? Sure. It's a, it's a service organization that's um, so that you, there's Kiwanis, Lions, Elks, and then Rotary, and then there's Seroptimus. Um, that's a female one, but we're Rotary and we're in, an international, it's all business owners mainly that had okay. started this originally. Um, but we, you know, we do good for the community and internationally. Uh, it's a great organization to be part of. And I got into it in 2005, five or six. Oh, really? Yeah. And it took me, I don't know, until 2023 to be president. And you've been doing that now for almost seven years. What the the, the Rotary? President, the, the, no, 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 no. I've been. I'm only no one year as president. One year as president. Okay. And then after that, oh. then you could. Can you serve in any other capacity after? You, you can do whatever you. Yeah. I. I. So there's there's a lot of different pla things you can serve in a Rotary. In in each Rotary, it's different. Mm -hmm. uh, but like um, I have a board. And there's multiple people on my board that do different things. And they, some of them served one year, some have served three years. Okay. Uh, my Sergeant at Arms who helps me run the meeting uh, that he's been, he did it last year and he's doing it my year. I, I asked him to do it my year, um, but somebody else asked him to fill in the, the year that he came in the club. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I mean, it's something that you should look into locally. It's a great organization. It's a great way to get back. I use my rotary to help this year to do the firewalk for veterans. Um, because I said when I wanted to do, when I became my, the president of rotary, I wanted of my, you know, Modesto sunrise rotary, I wanted to do more vets in our area. And right. so I did a couple of different things. And then the biggest thing was the two day event that we had vets come in with the, you know, they, at the end, they actually walked across fire. So could you, and you know, and I know you kind of, shared that a little bit with me last time but could you tell me does i mean rock cross fire on with bare feet and kind of walking across the hot coals it's hot coals basically but if you and it's a you don't burn your feet if you 
focus and you walk at a, at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow, but you don't stop. If you stop, you're going to 10% of people potentially can have a, get a blister from it. Wow. Yeah. I got a blister using my heat pad on my leg the other day. So I don't want <laughs> when I usually use my back, I, you know, like my knees bother me. I'm going to use it. And then I had a little, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh but it's, it's the w- thing about it is, and why we did it's operation firewalk.com. You can go check it out. There's some, there's a video on there from somebody else's firewalk. We haven't uploaded our stuff. Okay. We're already set up for doing it next year, May 3rd, 2025. We have the same event. We're going to do a one day, but mm-hmm. probably more of a sixth our thing we'll have multiple veterans come and speak different ones that okay. you know, keynote speakers besides the ones we had before we're going to add a bunch more so oh, nice yeah so but it's going to be people who can relate to other people i don't want to say who they are yet because i haven't solidified them yet but okay, um, they're yeah. just people that you would know that were in the military you know that happen something happened to them and they get went through it and it's just to help you deal with ptsd and other things i had one guy who texted me afterwards he's like you know i really didn't want to share but thank you and um and you know it was more than i really wanted to do he kept going on but then the last line was this was a real game changer wow and i can see it being the case because you know a lot of times uh especially if you get deployed and you go overseas and you know you definitely depend on where you are you will suffer PTSD because of some of the stuff that you go through. So I, I can see that being helpful to kind of talk to somebody and so they can listen, you know? So right. well, we, um, I interviewed the, uh, warrior's heart, um, which is warrior's heart.com. They're actually, you're in, where are you located? Uh, Texas. Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're out of Texas. Um, they have a facility there, a uh, 70 bed facility for, veterans and first responders and everything for really? you know alcoholism ptsd all that kind of stuff to help people get through it yeah and they're located here in texas yeah 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 okay yeah. all right I, I yeah warriors heart. Warriors heart. okay i never heard yeah. of them before you know you I, hear- ne- I never heard of them either until i interviewed them wow because you know you hear a place like fisher house or you heard that before right fisher house mm-hmm. or mcdonald house yeah, yeah. They have like a, a Fisher House here where they help um help like the veterans' families and stuff when they come back if they uh got wounded or some over in over in, uh when they're deployed and it helps the family. They have like uh you can stay at the Fisher House and they you know provide care for you, feed you, all that good stuff. So it's a pretty good uh, organization too. So they have a couple of those in the area. Okay. Yeah. This is just set up for helping vets, you know, uh, alcohol abuse, chemical dependency, PTSD treatment for active duty military veterans and first responders. Wow. Um, Yeah. So there, um, I forget where he said it was in Texas, but I was trying, I'm trying to see if I can find the location real quick, but it won't, uh, it is, uh, B A N D E R A Texas B Bandera Bandera. Oh Bandero. yeah, yeah, Bandera. That's not too far from from um, where we are. Yeah. So. Oh wow, I, I never heard that before. Yeah, really nice people. He was a really nice guy, um, and we talked about it, and it was a great program. So that and now be, that would be in release right before this one will be. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I I never heard it before. It's not too far from where we are. So okay. Yeah, something and so, it's something he wanted to do, and he dealt with his stuff when he was younger. You know, when he was like 22, 23 when he was in the military. Mm-hmm. But he had been around helping people for the time he retired. He retired like twenty years out of the. I think it was army. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just saying. There's a lot that's going on in Texas. I mean, there is a combat. Uh, a, for you know, combat veterans, uh, other for um, help when you need it, when you think you're going to commit suicide, there's a there's a n- f- group of guys there in Texas that they take those calls and they help you out and all that stuff. Wow, and that's I mean, yeah, because I guess you know Texas is where a lot of veterans. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess you know military people come in, they retire in Texas, and there's a lot of veterans in in Texas area. So I can see a lot of different organizations be here to help. You know, help uh, veterans go through different issues that they have after the military. Well, there's a lot of bases there too. Still, so in yeah. California, there's not. 
they're saying there's 32nd street in north island and uh really nothing in northern california i mean there might be a look there's i think an air force base but there's really no navy much anymore here and you know that kind of stuff so wow so if you really want to get like any type of service in california what would you do would you have to well it just depends on where you're looking there's i didn't say there wasn't services i just said there wasn't as much veterans like in our area there's probably five percent of the population might be veterans oh okay gotcha yeah, you know where i think overall population of veterans in the united states is one percent less than one percent is served but i'm just saying if you look at your local area like if i was in san diego you'd be running into a lot more or you got washington state you know they have signs in front of lowe's veteran parking kind of stuff you know it's a little different yeah, you're right. Because I uh, I was in San Diego once. I went out there for like a a conference, whatever it was. And you're right. I think it was the Navy was like right there. Um, yeah, 32nd Street, man, a huge base. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It was and Balboa cool. is still there, but you know, and then you have uh, Camp Pendleton up in Oceanside, but you don't have you know all the ones. The Castle Air Force Base is no longer here. You know, it's a museum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they got rid of a lot of those bases in California because they were shutting them down during what the 80s, I think it was early 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. And because I remember, I think it was what was a Presidio or somewhere out there in, uh, in California. Yeah, that's in uh, that's in um, Monterey. Monterey. OK, but uh, I think they closed that one down and not sure what's there now, but. That was, right. Because uh, there was a there was a there was a school there for many, many years. I think it's still there. The, the, the language school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't. Wow. I could. I don't know. I could be wrong because uh, I've been wrong many times before. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> All right. So when you got out, did you did you know what you were going to do when you got out? I mean, well, was it a planned out or was it a medical out at twenty seven years? It was. It was actually a planned out. Um, and I knew it was time, you know, to get out. They always say you kind of know. So I, I knew it was time to kind of get out and do something else, do something different. So uh, when I got out, I really, I knew I kind of wanted to stay in the same field. I was in the military, you know, in the supply chain field. So that's what I kind of did. I, I got out, took a little break and uh, maybe I think I was maybe retired for about, about, about six months, I guess, um, before I actually started back uh, an, another profession. So, so uh, I stuck around supply chain field. But what do you do now? So now I'm um, a director. I mean, what, did, what was that supply? What did you get into when you, you got out? When I, when I got out, what I get into? Now I'm, uh, um, I work for a hospital as a director of logistics in a hospital, uh, which is right here in Texas. So that's what I wound up doing uh, when I got out. I started out as a manager and then uh, progressed up to director level. So that's what I'm currently doing now. And plus um, my wife and I, you know, we kind of ventured off and, started a you know a youtube podcast as well like you so we're doing that as well so yeah so seem to be pretty 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 steady pretty busy but it's good it's, yeah. it's a different different change uh when but then when you, you you took some time off when you got out did you lose your purpose or was it never lost because you kind of really knew what you were gonna i'm gonna take some time off and then i'm gonna go get this job Is that yeah I kind of, I kind of knew a little bit what I was going to do before I got out. Um, I already knew I wanted to kind of stay in the same profession for a while longer. And I also, you know, I, I was, I also knew I wanted to take a break. I just didn't want to hop back into something uh, again. You know, kind of want to relax my mind, especially after, um, you know, being deployed and then actually went to another location and kind of another duty station. And so I kind of knew I wanted to kind of just take a, a little chill pill for a little while and and just uh reset and that's what i did and i only did it for like i say about six months and i was back in back doing something something else so so with your with your job as supply where was your duty stations were they all over the world or were they pretty much in the same location no it was every place i mean i went from places like uh from always from washington state Okay. All the way to Virginia, um, South Carolina. I mean, I was a lot of different places um, serving. So yeah. So it's what just, was the best place? You know, I I kid you not. I, I kind of like Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, because, so when you when did you get stationed in Texas? Was that your last? Were you stationed there once, twice? Well, I was stationed here twice actually. Um, I was stationed in Texas early on in my career, um, and then I came back almost at the end of my career. Uh, but they moved me one more one last time, so I went myself. I left my family in place, and I went left my family in texas and uh once i went to the last place which was in alabama then i retired you know i left alabama and retired here in texas so so really at the beginning of my career and then at the closing of my career i wound up in texas so and where are you in texas say, say it again where are you in texas what's oh, the city san antonio that's san right antonio. Mm -hmm. yeah I san antonio. you like the humidity yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's a military city, so hey, this this is a nice location to be in. Yeah. Uh, well, that's yeah. where I went to my AIT. So, was, so you remember how hot it was here? Oh yeah, I was there. They got me there during the summer. So, yeah. ooh, in the summertime in Texas, okay. Yeah, I remember it was eighty and eighty. It wasn't hot at all. Yeah. That was the time I learned that you can actually sweat in air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Why am I sweating? Why is there water on me? Yeah. It's, it's just hot. Yeah, it's hot. And the golf ball hail, you know, all that fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. Still all that still happens. You know, we still get hail from time to time and um, you know, still get some weather from time to time. But um but most for the most part, it's not a bad place. I love the river walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, still there, still nice. You know, my son went to AIT there few years ago and so we actually went there my wife had never been there and uh you know and had to show them the alamo and of course my joke to everybody was guess where i'm at it's how i like my pie <laughs> oh it only took a few people to get that one yeah oh yeah. my goodness <laughs> only you Ed. only you <laughs> Well, you got it, so you're laughing, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, but no, Ed. But everything has been pretty good so far. I mean, being a military, of course, you know, it was a like anything, right? It was a transition. Right. Um, well, it couldn't be that bad because don't you, your children in? Didn't you have kids? Yeah, I, actually, actually, my my son, I got two son-in-laws with uh, that's in. Um, and to my daughter, you know, married married them, and they're in. Uh, in El Paso, actually, at Fort Bliss. So, yeah, they're they're in too. So, hey, it's, well, it's got to be a Texas thing, huh? It's a Texas thing. I mean, you know, once you come to Texas, they always say you're gonna like it. You're never gonna leave. So, <laughs> well, that didn't happen to me, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Every you know, to each his own. I prefer yeah. my weather, just not my politics that are here. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, everything can change if you don't stand and fight. You know, it's like those kids at the uh, uh, Cade of whatever they were yesterday or the other day where they stood and held the flag, the American flag, instead of letting the protesters take it down again. You know? mm, yeah. Yeah. Stand up for our, what we believe in again. Yeah. You, well, you're right. I mean, because if you don't, I always say if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. So you have to stand for something. And because if not, your rights can be easily taken away. Right. All right, so you were in 27 years from the moment you got in until you got out. How how different of a mil army was it? Wow. Well, you know what I mean, right? I do. Yeah. Wow. It was um. Yes, it's really very different from when I went in to compared to now. Um, you know, a lot of things have changed. Um, it, Give me I mean, an example. Well. For one, um, when I went in, you had the don't ask, don't tell policy, right? You know? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but of course now, you know, I guess. I, I, and that was in when I was in, and but the, you always knew who everybody was, so who, no one cared. So, yeah, yeah. yeah and, but but now, you know, it's, it's more, you can just, it's visible now, right? So that's, that's something that changed. Um, you know, when I was in the PT was different. Um, you actually know, had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the PT was different when I was in. Now it's, they actually changed the actual, uh, PT 
program to something totally different than when I was in. I think they got to lift weights now and do uh, dead men drags or something. It's it's, to, it's totally different uh, when I was than when I was in. Um, uh, some of the the facial hair requirements look they have look that has changed. Um, Cause I, you go in now, you might see people with some full beards. When I was in, you really you really didn't see that um, at all. Right, unless they had some major medical Correct. problem. Right. Correct. Um, yeah. Good um, luck with that one. Yeah. Well, that was like my hair. You know, my hair was super long when I was in. It was probably the longest it's ever been, but it was by regs. Well, see, right? credit card. Right. You know, by the actual ID. You know, right. I knew the, I knew I read the regs, and so when they'd come to your hair's too long. No, it's not. And I pull up my ID card and show them. Well, see, that's the catch right there. As long as you, as long as you had the reg, you can prove it. Then that's different, right? But right. But I mean, but people want to control. That was my, you know, why I didn't like it. It was somebody could be in longer than me, dumber than me, but tell me what to do just because they were in longer than me. <laughs> that was my problem. <laughs> yeah. That's why I couldn't make it past you know, five years, five months and 14 days. Plus I, I got my bachelor's while I was in, I was working on my master's. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they're like, well, become an officer. I don't want to be a line a line officer on a ship. That's all you have in the Navy. No, oh, thank you. Oh, I, I chose a specialty school because when I was in 18 months in the Navy, they were like, okay. And I went to camp Pendleton. I didn't go to the ward. They asked anybody who knows computers here. And I said, I do. And they sent me down to mobilization and planning instead of going to the ward to take care of bedpans and all the other stuff. So I, and I did that for 18 months. It's, it was working with reserves and, you know, all these different things, top secret clearance. It was an amazing thing. And then they're like, okay, 18 months, Ed, do you have a choice? Uh, you're either going to get a ship or you go to a specialty school. I said, well, what specialty school is not on a ship? And they said physical therapy. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. So I went to physical therapy school in AIT in Texas and mm -hmm. came back to Camp Pendleton. And they said, we're going to keep you here at Camp Pendleton. I'm like, all right, I'll stay. And so that was my whole time, except for when I was in boot camp and core school. So Camp Pendleton, no, pretty much the whole time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, it was great because I was in North County, San Diego, by the coast. You know, great weather, great stuff. It was the best place. But at the time I was in, and 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 when I got out, even though I was in San Diego, I always felt they didn't want you there. They didn't like the military people. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. you were more of a new, you know, nuisance. You were in their way. Um, you know, you you know that kind of stuff. But I was also single at the time, so you know it's a little different. Well, yeah, but I'm he, sure he, Texas is different because they, they, you know, they, they like you. Yeah, they, oh yeah, they, it's it's different. It's it's like I said, it's military city, so um, pretty nice place to be actually. Yeah. So if you're not from Texas, you want to come? Hey, come on to Texas. <laughs> Just <add> uh, on. <laughs> no, I have no problem visiting. But you want to, you don't want to stay too hot. Okay. I don't understand it. I'd have to have another. So there's so many people who live in certain places and they go, okay, well for this six months, we're, we're here or three months we do here during this period of time. I want to live in one place. I don't want to have to travel, you know, for three months over here or six months over here. I I'm good where I'm at. We, we get 12 to 18 days over a hundred, maybe 110. Mm -hmm. Right. But we have a pool. Other than that, it's, you know, 80s and you know then during the winter it doesn't snow it just gets cold 30 degrees and the, but it's dry it's all dry oh okay so no snow just dry okay well, if i want snow i go up to my cabin which is about a mile an hour away 71 okay. miles okay well that's so, not bad at all no so where i'm located it's a great place to go to a lot of different places from that's oh wow way, but yeah it's a great city but it's a great location to go, you know, if I want to go to the Bay Area, it's an hour and something, you know, hour and 10 minutes. If I want to go to the mountains, it's an hour, a little hour and 20 minutes for our cabin. Mm. But if I want to go drink wine, that's Napa, that's two hours. You know, I mean, it's, it's, so it's you essentially you're located. Looking. yeah, for what, I, yes, we did become the top overpriced town in the state of California. Hmm. Overpriced yeah. for overpriced for homes. Overpriced. Yeah, premium. Well, premium. What it meant was, people think it's worth this, but the value is really worth this. You know what I mean? Oh, and wow. they were totally off by like thirty two percent in our area. Where like San Diego, they're off by seventeen percent or twenty percent. People don't realize how much our houses have gone up 
just because of lack of inventory. Wow. Wow. So now, since you said it went up that much, I mean, do you even have enough inventory to even meet the need? We The problem is not meeting the needs. It's the problem that nobody wants to do anything now with seven plus interest rates. You know, there's just so many. What, you know, when 5% of an interest rate, you go up 5% of interest rate, plus then you add, you know, the cost of everything. I, we had some people come here for the fire walk um, that was helping us put it on. They're from Missouri or whatever. They're like, I cannot believe how expensive your guys' gas is and the food and the wood and the, all that. It's like, it's, so, it's, so is it really that expensive though, Ed? I mean, five, you know, you, my diesel's probably almost six bucks a gallon. Oh, wow. So it just depends. Oh, wow. That is pretty expensive. Wow. Wow. Six bucks. But it just gallon. depends, you know, but, but that had to do with, you know, the shutting down the pipeline and all the other stuff that has happened. You know, the, it just, you know, I, I don't care if this administration was a Republican administration or independent. I'd still say they were horrible and they had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> it's not a party thing. It's just who's in power has, you can't put in power by yeah. color. Please don't take that wrong. Yeah, um, no. but it's gotta be the best person for the job. I, would, I, I don't would. care who it is. It's just, it's that way. Cause if you don't do it that way, then you take away that person who gets the job. You only got it because of this reason, or you only, you know, when really they could have been the best choice for the job, but because of what this administration says and how they're doing it, makes them the worst and it's like that's not helping anybody that's like getting everybody on welfare then you have no desire to go do better for yourself yeah i, I would have to agree with that this is it's about who's best qualified to to move the country forward actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know and who lines up with your your values you know based on what your what your what your beliefs are and then what the platform is if you if you line up that you can actually run the country then by all means right i think what they you should have to go in the military to be in the politics because then you would learn how to work with people and you would understand that yes there are some idiots my dad was one of them he was a he was a total bigot luckily he died when i was 12 of hairy cell leukemia I, you know i say that way but it's like racism isn't it's you're not born with it it's taught right, right? and it's on both sides i don't care what a good friend of mine he's like dude you can't say anything about your people because my parent, my grandparents and blah, blah, blah. They were the worst <laughs> talking about, you know, all the different. And it's like, it's just what we're, you know, you, when we're in the military, we'll make jokes and, and really bad racial jokes sometimes back and forth at each other. And, but we don't mean it like, yeah, that way. Yeah. We're just dealing with stress. That is horrible that we're trying to deal with. I was in the medical field. So, you're dealing with wound care, you know, patients and stuff you're dealing with. You'll say stuff back and forth to each other that if you did it out in civilian world, you'd be oh. arrested. Oh, yeah, you will. Yeah. Arrested, fired, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of that, it, all yeah. at once. Yeah. But if we, if we didn't, we wouldn't have gone along, you know, we we cared about each other more than anything else. And, we, and that's why we did it. It's like we have some, you know, I remember being in. People are like, how can you eat in here while you're got the wound care and everything else? I mean, how else am I supposed to re be able to be in here if I'm not eating an apple occasionally? You know, I had to eat. Plus, I worked out a lot back then. Because yeah, they probably looked at you like, I can't believe you look at these wounds and you eating, you still eating? Yeah. Well, it's the whole thing about a lot of stuff we can get uh, jaded from, right? Where we it doesn't bother us anymore. And that stuff that we got to start looking at again. History is so important. We can't tear anything down because we need to have that history there to remind us of what we did. It's like if everything was hit about Hitler, well, guess what? We'd have them again. Isn't that something? Yeah, because like two weeks ago, the reason I brought that up, two weeks ago, we had a, a guy on our rotary who came, who spoke at our rotary, and he was a kid during that period of time and in camps, in a camp. Really? So, yeah. So, and he talked about certain things you should read certain, you know, about the Nazis and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, a couple of guys who today stood up and said, Hey, last week, so-and-so said, you know, we should read this. You really should. Cause I guess it was really powerful. So how, how people can strip things to make it to where somebody comes in power, almost kind of what's happening right now to a certain point, you know? So. Wow. 
Wow. And, yeah, yeah. And that's the whole thing about history. You got to know what your history is so we don't repeat it. You know, you can't. And I tell people, stop voting party. Vote your pocketbook. Stop voting party. Yeah, but you you know, and, and that's and you say that, but then most people they do vote party. Most people, instead of looking at the what's the actual on the platform and say, okay, what are my plat what are the platform and does it align with my values that and then if that person aligned my values with the platform, then you know what? That's what I'm voting for, whether it's Democrat, Republican, independent, right? So, but it usually doesn't happen like that. No, I know they're, they, they're like, oh, this is most important. The party, the party, no, the party is not, that's what they ex want you to do. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know, take advantage of you do, and do things that they have you, what you feel in our, it's like veterans, we trust whatever, and we care. And that's why there's companies that are online and, and on TV that are like, uh, we'll, we'll take really good care of you as a veteran mm -hmm. and we'll do a refinance for you. And if you look in their fine print, it's ridiculous how much they're charging. Mm-hmm. And, and most vets are like, okay, they're taking care of me. No, look at the fine print. They're not. It's the same yeah. thing with that, go that government of ours and everything else. And I'm not going to mean conspiracy theory. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying just check the stuff. They expect you to just follow the line. It's like in California, how they trick us is like there was a Safe Neighborhoods Act. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with safe neighborhoods. Had to do with letting prisoners out early. Really? But the... Uh, yeah, but they knew that if they made it state one thing, people aren't going to read. So though, oh, safe neighborhoods. Yes, I want safe neighborhoods. But it was the complete opposite. Wow. And so then there was a gas tax that went through that we all kicked off. So they ran it again. And this time, so the first time we all said no, because that's what we don't want this. So they made it to where you had to say yes to get rid of it this time. Everybody checks no because they think, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. But that's not what they had set it up to do. So our secretary of state knows how to manipulate things. And that's this governor and stuff like that. And everybody's like, well, why don't you leave California? Why? I'd rather fight and get it back to normal. We've been here before. The 1970s happened. Then the 80s happened, which was Ronald Reagan and, and changes in everything. You had, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't the greatest president president i mean um governor governor and the problem why we have such problems in california is because of what he did at the end when he was trying to keep republicans in power they passed a bill that said the top two people is all that needs to be on the ballot instead of the top two parties so now in certain areas there's top two democrats are the only ones you never get a republican in there to compete against them so, so that's why it stays democrat so I wonder, can that, can that be changed though? They don't, well, it can, it could be as if the Democrats wanted it changed, but, but they don't they, want it change. If they're in power, why change it? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. They're not dumb. They weren't the ones who shoved it. You can't shove anything in quick at the end because you make a mistake and that's wow. what happened. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that until I got more involved with the talk radio and I was down at, during the voting, I was asked to go down there for the sheriff to be part of it and, and then also relay back to the radio station what's going on. And I was talking to the lady that runs the whole thing and, and we were talking about all that and a bunch of other people. And they're like, you know why this there's a problem, why we have this problem in California. And they, we went through it and then I researched it and they were totally right. So that's the reason why. Yeah. And so really and truly, you would never be able to break through from that until really until until another type party getting whether Republican or independent get in the office. There's it's top two people. So you're never gonna have like in certain areas like over by the bay that are solely liberal pushed and they're all tech people, they're never gonna vote the opposite way. I mean, if you, if this co country keeps going the way we're going, like if we don't make this change in December in December in, in the next election and, and this party says, guess what? We can get keep doing what we're doing. And we don't care. Nobody cares if we do anything differently. Yeah. It gets worse. That's what happened with the governor here when they got recalled, but they didn't do it well. And now he stayed in power and he had such a war chest. There was no way you're going to get rid of him the next time. So you just got to be careful with what you do. So. Wow. 
Wow. So that's why you have some of the things you have in California. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing you got to remember, though, as California goes, then goes the nation. What? Yep. <laughs> Be careful. You, you think so? You watch. Yeah. So there's a bunch of states that have the same, you know, EPA, those stupid regulations that California started putting in. A bunch of other states started doing. A lot of people go, I'm going to move to Colorado because it's better. It's just as bad as California now. Wow. Yeah. They, yeah, it's not better. It's actually worse than certain. The only thing they got better is there's no waiting period for your gun. Um, here we have to wait, you know, 10 days or whatever it is. So you, before you actually can purchase a gun, right? Well, before you can take it home, you purchase it that day that they hold it for you for 10 oh, days. Oh, really? Yeah. So that, you know, because, you know, in those 10 days, you make your changes with you're not going to go kill that person. If I'm going to kill somebody, I'm going to go get one on the street. I'm not going to go pay cash and, and put it on a card. The dumbest thing. So what I did is there are certain things I can't get in California. So when my son was in Alaska, he get he gave me a bunch of presents. There it is. Do what you got to do. Inner family transfer. There it is. Can't stop it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So you so in Alaska, it, that's not a rule in Alaska. So you can just get it. You walked in on the post and bought whatever he wanted, man. Wow. Walked out that day. Is that how's Texas? Do you got waiting period there at all, or can you walk in and pick up a gun and walk right out? No, you can walk. They have to do uh, a check. Like, yeah, he they did a check for. Yeah, they two. do a check, and then once they do the check, you may have to wait, you know, a day or whatever. And when they get the check back, and then you can go back and purchase. <laughs> Right. Well, it just so it depends on how long the check takes, is what right. you're saying. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's quick, no, he's doing it, it's an hour. You can walk out. Yeah, he can post. He can be like, I want that one, that one, that one, and that one. And as long as the check came back, and then there was only like so many he could buy in a a month period, but it was like ridiculous amount. So yeah, wow. or they had to, or they had to fill out another form why they're buying so many. But he got a fifty cal pistol. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, fifty. Whoa, Desert Eagle. Whoa, because he's in Alaska. I mean, like, whatever you can carry, you know, open carry, you know, whatever. Whoa, 50 yeah. cal pistol. That's yeah. Well, first <laughs> of all, it's a lot of holding. I did because I did a Desert yeah, Eagle like, 3, 357 Magnum Desert Eagle, and that flame out of the end of that and that shock. Yeah, it's a lot. I could just imagine the 50 cal. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna say 50 cal. What I, I can't imagine holding that. I think that'll probably knock you down. Well, he shot it a few times, so if you're ready for it, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. that's okay. I, I have to pass on that one. Have you, have you shot that one before? Mm -mm. No, because no. he bought it when I wasn't up there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, I know it's had some power behind it. Yeah, but I mean, I don't need that. Yeah. I just need, I you know, concealed weapon permit. I That's what I have. I just have to have everything in my name. So. And that's it. Okay. So that's pretty good then. If you can consider it, I mean... So if you if if you can do it in Alaska, but you can't do it in California, so well, what it is is they passed a law here that until the guns can imprint the serial number on the bullet or the casing, uh, they can't you can't oh, get new no. guns. So they passed this thing a long time ago to stop us, but we could still get the older stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Which is still the same, you know, for most people. But six came out with new models that I wanted, and they, you know, that's what I wanted. Well, I couldn't get them in California. It's just stupidity. They think by stopping that, it's going to stop. You know, it's just all control. It has nothing to do with, you know, people who go kill people with guns. They don't get them the right way anyway. No, they usually get them, like you say, they'll go buy them from someplace else. And right. not yeah, on the street. Yeah, yeah. not legal. Or go, or go steal them. Um, and that whole thing about AR, you know, it's all rifle. It's such a, you know, and that's not what us AR stands for, but they sure know how to make it that way. And they're so, you know, bad, they're horrible. You can't have them. Okay. What is it? Uh, 1% of all gunshot sh shootings were done with an AR. But how many people are killed with cars? How many kids are killed with cell phones? Right. Cause they're not paying attention. And the, you know, there's so many other things you could, that you should worry about than those things, but they want to control those things. Yeah, because, kind of got off subject there. I apologize, Johnny. No, well, no, that's what you see on the news, though. I mean, you, you that's what you see. Yeah, you see guns, and you know, they don't really necessarily um show you all the statistics when it comes to, like you said, uh, if somebody got hit by a car because of their phone, right? right. Not, 
attention. And texting and di- driving and texting teens. How many die in that thing? But no one takes their phone away. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't see that number, but I'm sure it's probably pretty high. Well, someone said, you know, with the way that they do in the gun control, that'd be like um, taking everybody's car away um, except for the alcoholics. Wow. I never right? thought that way. Yeah, Think I never thought that way. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else can drive because there's alcoholics on the road. I, n- I never thought of it that way. But I could, I, I mean, I guess you could see it that way because you're right. If so, the gun owners, you don't want to do get- anything wrong, but you know, they're potentially these other people. So we got to control everybody. Wow. Yeah. You All right. Was- I'm done being on my soapbox there, Johnny. What else you want to talk about before we go? Is there anything, um, what's n- next for you? Okay. I know you got you and your wife do a podcast. What's the yeah. name of your podcast? So it's the money talk. Um, we have a podcast and a YouTube channel. And so we are on there talking about, you know, how to become, you know, financial free, you know, financially free, whether it's that managing your debt, managing, uh, investing, you know, managing your resources well, so you can one day potentially retire well. So, and that's some of the things we talk about. Um, you know, we have anything from estate planning on there, from you, Ed, which you kind of dealt with uh, homes and uh, home purchasing and, and the right way to do it. So, yeah, so we have multi, like a just a wide range of topics that we talk about when it comes to money. So, okay. and what day do you drop? Do you have a standard day that you actually promote yep. everything? Yep. On, every Thursday we come out with uh, a new content every Thursday. We just, matter of fact, something just came out today. Um, this today, this Thursday here. And, um, but yeah, every Thursday we're out there podcast, YouTube, um, check us out. It's, it's called the money talk. Um, so yeah. We're, we're is that out. the money? And so on YouTube, is it the money talk also on the YouTube? Mm-hmm. It is the money talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you can find us out there and, and yeah, we're, we're trying to help financial literacy, I guess we're trying to do that thing. So, all right, Johnny, thank you so much for coming on the helping the brave today and telling kind of your story and then yeah. let me get on my soapbox. I appreciate that. No, well, thank you Ed, for having me. I really enjoy being on your show and um, I look forward to probably speaking for you again soon. Please. All right. Stay right there. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. You know, what best thing you can do is just hit that subscribe button and that's how you can support us. Again, Johnny, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Thank